I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Felicio. I'm Camilla. I'm Z Garcia. And today we're taking a look at Life of the Amazonia. Now this is from Bad Comet. It is their second game, I believe. Third game? What was their first? Mm. Shaolia. Oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. Well, their last game was Wild Serengeti, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. which was very exciting for a lot of people because of the cool little animal meeples. Yeah. And there's a ton of them in this game, too. Um, that one came out to mediocre reviews for the most part. Mike liked it, mm -hmm. but he's pretty much the only person. Well, no, I knew it had flaws. In, 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 yeah. in all creation. <laughs> well, sure, yeah. That's <laughs> wow. Cool. Wow. That's not quite true. This one, uh, I was wondering, it, it's a very different game. Yeah, it this really is. This is a bag building game, some people call it, or mm -hmm. a pool building. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm telling you. Z's going to show you. Okay, I'll try. The objective of the game is to score the most victory points, and you are going to do that from a few different things, but mainly from deploying these characters. You will acquire them for their costs, deploy them to your jungle, and then score them at the end of the game based on whatever they would like to score around them, whatever the condition is. There are various uh, versions of these characters, and so you'll just pick one at the beginning of the game for all of these and set them out and score from that. You're also going to score from moving up on these tracks, which are giving you various benefits, but as you move up, you're also scoring at the end of the game, victory points. And then you're scoring from these cards right here, that are going to give you some sort of scoring condition at the end of the game. So whatever it may be, you'll score some victory points from that. And a few other minor things, but those are the main ways in which you are getting victory points in this game. Now, the way the game flows is it's a bag building game. And so we begin with a very basic bag here with a few of these tokens inside of it. Each turn, you're going to take out some of these tokens and then you are going to, let's say I got that, you are going to use these tokens in order to acquire new things, acquire more possibilities. You can spend gold, for example, to buy better tokens out here, and you'll see that they have costs along the side. So for example, if I want a two water token because I'd like to improve my bag, I can pay three coins for that, I can pay six coins for this one, I could buy food, which is going to help me acquire some of these animals, and then over here we've got the ability to buy coins as well, and uh, some of these plants. And again, these are all going to have their various uses. You begin with a very weak bag and you're trying to improve that bag as the game goes on. You can spend uh, water to move up on some of these tracks. This one, for example, will get you these flowers. You will deploy them to your uh, jungle here like that. Once you spend any of these things, say I spend this one to move there and get one of those, you're gonna have a little boat that you throw these spent tokens in, and once your bag is empty, then you will dump all of these back in the bag, and there's your bag ready to go again. Uh, you will be able to move up on this one for the leaves and deploy these trees. Uh, the trees will help you, again, score victory points based on various things. I'll lay that down so you can see it. Um, you've got your gold, you've got various things. So the animals are normally going to take the food and possibly water, possibly these plant tokens. You've also got these cards and there will be a spread of them that you can acquire for water. All right. And so that's another usage for the water. And if you move up on this top one, you're going to get new landscapes here that you can add to your display, grow your jungle, give you more room for animals, plants, flowers, what have you. So that's the idea. Once you are done, you'll be able to keep possibly one of these tokens, possibly more. You can move up over here if you want to keep more of them as well. Uh, you can also spend, by the way, some gold or uh, the plants over here for some special bonuses. These are going to be spent, like I said, in your boat, and then you give this a good shake and draw your next hand of tokens, and it's the next player's turn. So there you go, that is what's going on. Uh, these animals, uh, there's going to be a certain number of them sitting on the cards, they will start to run out. Once a type is fully gone, we will put one of these tokens to denote that that type of animal is gone. And then once we've run out of these, 
That's going to signify the end of the game, a couple more turns around the table, and it's time to score victory points. So there you go, that is a general uh, overview of what is going on in the game. The idea, of course, and the trickiness comes from how you sequence uh, your, uh, your animal's deployment here, your uh, special abilities, these being one-offs, these being scoring opportunities, and you can only have a certain number of them, uh, how you spend your uh, resources, uh, how you level up your bag and the abilities within it. So there you go. That's again a very broad overview of what is happening in the game. Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of the general flow and mechanisms of uh, Amazonia. Let's go ahead and go back up top. When we first played this we said it was uh... Cascadia um, Ecos, right? I feel, yeah, I feel like at different points of the game, we referenced, sometimes we said Cascadia, sometimes we said Ecos. Um, we definitely talked about Wild Serengeti a couple times as well. Um, yeah, that has lots of pieces of each of those. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess I just think of it as very much inspired by Cascadia, but with that bag building element. And, and the scoring is more, I think, Probably ver ver uh, there's more variety in the scoring, I think, in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. That's the main thing it makes me think of as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I think I can almost say if you like Cascadia and you want a, a, a step up, that would there's be a little the, bit more going that on. That would be this. the caveat. There's a lot yes. more going there's on. There's a lot I would more going say. on. I don't think there's a little more going on. There's, I think, yeah. yeah, Cascadia is a family weight game. I would not introduce new players to this game. Yeah, if you want a heavier, like a game night game, Cascadia yes. is a family weight, right. or a light game night, something like that game. If you want a gamer's game night, Cascadia, mm -hmm. that's more what this feels like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this is bag building or pool building, and I really like that mechanism. There's not a lot of games that do it. It is tough on the, physically on the tokens that you pull out. Right. And it's always going to be the case, but here there's four currencies, mm -hmm. um, and I think they do a good job at keeping the currencies Pretty relevant. Yes. Uh, even near the end of the game, if you buy a lot of gold at the beginning, you're like, I want to buy more tokens. Yeah. At the end of the game, you can use it for actions. Three leaves become wild. I mean, uh, well, they become a seed, which is wild at the end of the game. And water is always relevant because mm -hmm. of the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fruit lets you buy animals. And I, I like that you can pick one to concentrate. You can spread out. Yes. Yeah. I like that system in a couple of ways. One, because, uh, like you said, there is usually a pivot point where you want to go from buying tokens to then culling tokens and focusing on what your better tokens are going to do for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that. And it's interesting, I was actually having a conversation with, I believe it was Roy, um, where I was like, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of burnt on deck building, but I still like bag building. And I'm like, I wonder why. And I think the thing I came to is something you just mentioned a moment ago. It's that you've got more... Um, things that you're dealing with. With a, with a deck building game, you basically might have one or two resources, right? Mm -hmm. Here you've got the four, and it's more diverse, and it makes me more interested on my turn, right? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, games like Dominion, for example, generally speaking, have one pivot point. Right. You go from, you know, making money to now making points, which generally don't do anything for you during the game, but they win you the game. Mm -hmm. This one... You have all these things you are managing. You can focus on animals and, and scoring them well. Yes. Or water, which buys you cards for victory points. Mm -hmm. Or advancing on the tracks, which grows your landscape, gives you trees, and gives you uh, the flowers and the, and the water. And gives you points. Gives you points, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but really, it's like you kind of want to do a little bit of all of it. And mm -hmm. so at no point do you feel like you're really going... Like you're you're shifting from sort of just building to scoring. Right. You're doing it simultaneously. So it's got a nice ramp up effect because yes, your tiles as you dig in your bag, you go great. I'm pulling threes and fours now. I'm doing bigger things. I can afford more expensive things. But at no point do you make that big switch. Yeah. And I like that ramp up. Mm -hmm. I like not having to go. Okay, I don't get to do that thing anymore. Now I'm doing this other thing. You you do it all. Right. And I think that you have a variety of paths to victory, right? Mm -hmm. um, there might be, depending upon what cards come out, depending upon kind of how you've built your, your pool, um, you could go for a very large ecosystem, right, and, and, and try to score points because of that. 
Uh, you can go with a very small one. Again, there's there going to be certain scoring cards that may, you know, maybe at mid-game you're like, you know what, I, I think I could maximize that card. So I'm going to take that, and now I'm going to, that's going to tailor my strategy moving forward. Um, moving up tracks is a, is a viable potential strategy you can take. You know, the animal scoring, like you said, the end game scoring cards. But I also like that they put some limiters on that. Um, you can't just buy eight end game scoring cards. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think right. that that would lead right. to gaming the game a little right. bit. So. Yeah, I think it's a good balance, too, of of the pivot points that you were talking about, but then also the focal points, you mm -hmm. know, because you're having to pivot as as you're changing your resources. I mean, everything we just talked about. But then also there's that mid game where you're like, OK, now I need to kind of hone in on how I'm going to score. Yeah. You know, you have the built in score with the animals, but with those. So it's at the same time that you're pivoting, you're also honing in on something specific. And I think there's a really good balance and crossover of those two. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, there's no moment where you go, OK, I'm doing I'm no longer doing that. I'm now doing this. And throughout the game, you know, mm. yeah, I'm like, okay, well, I want one large group of water. Great. Once I hit cap that card out, though, I sort of stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And I can go, ooh, what do I want next? What right. new yeah. toy? What new focus am I going for? Uh, ooh, jaguars are actually would work well for me. That's my thing for mm -hmm. the next right. four or five turns. Yeah. After I max that out, I'm like, what's next? Ooh, a car that scores off of trees? I got a lot of those. I'll buy that. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. I feel like um, the game, the number of players, uh, I always want them to be a little bit less. Like two and three is better for me with mm -hmm. this because that's what deck builders almost always are. I agree. I don't want to mess with having too many people messing with stuff before it's my turn again. But I do feel like the game is a smidge too long. I'm there with you. Mm -hmm. There yeah. is a variant in the rule book where they have you take out a bunch of animals, not a bunch, but several animals from each grouping. And then you, you play that, and it's quick. And then when you're done, it says you can quick add. Everyone can add one bush, one tree, and one tile. Mm -hmm. At the end. At yeah. the end. Okay. Which would then make that end game score and be like, okay, mm. put your stuff down. Right. <laughs> yeah, it would take a little bit of time. It would take a little bit. Right. I don't know if I want it to be that short, though. I'm thinking I could lose one or two animals from each. I'm going to try that in the future and see. Yeah. Yeah. Because I really like the game. I think the end game score is great. But I, want, I don't know that the end game scoring's hurt that much by me playing those last 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. Right. I think for me, at four players, it's too long. And by the time one or two people are taking their turn, I already know what I'm going to do on my turn unless mm. something is bought up and, again, I have to pivot. Yeah. So I think that two to three players, I want that extra time to plan out my turn right. so it doesn't slow it down. But four players, there's either one or two people's turns that I'm just sitting there kind of waiting. Right. So I really like that. I don't mind the time because then it gives you a chance to think and because it can get kind of that AP, that analysis right. paralysis overhead where you're like, if I do this or that or combo, you can get very caught up in what you're yeah. doing. So I yeah. need that time. But at four players, there's a little bit too much right. of it. And th that's my main negative from the game is I do think at four players it's too long. I think that one to three is, it is works well. Um, the only thing I would worry about with removing a number of animals is that I think that it would uh, make some of the end game scoring cards less viable, less 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 likely to actually, you know what I mean? And does it throw off that balance right. if you're one that went into now if nobody has those, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, right. You know, but if you are the one that went into yeah. that, then you could there could be an imbalance I, in those cards. I think it's too long with three. Oh, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think, think it's, it's just still about right. a smidge too long. Okay. You still have a lot of animals. It's you not do. Like you only add a couple extra animals for four players. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the game is that much longer, other yeah. than me waiting for you to take your turn. That's, I think, the big difference to me is that you have less time between your turns. The game may still be, you know, a similar length, but it doesn't feel as long because I'm not waiting as much. That's true. That's true. Um, that, that's the <laughs> only thing there. But. That's my biggest negative. My biggest positive, I don't know what, what you guys think about this, but I love the way they handle individual player powers in this game. Mm. I think it's really neat. You don't necessarily start with one right away. You get a unique animal that you get a place in your habitat, but it's going to have some kind of requirement to place it, right? And so once you meet that requirement, maybe it needs to be next to two trees. Um, you put that out, and now you've got a special power for the rest of the game. I like that. I think it's really neat because... It feels integrated because each of your animals are also, you know, either a mammal or a, sure. you know what I mean, a bird. And, and that can be included in your endgame scoring and, and other scoring. So I really like how they handle that. I guess it's a little not that exciting, though. I mean, 
the player powers are, and I'm not convinced they're all balanced, but mm -hmm. maybe they are. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But that, hey, you need to do this to put it out, means it's turn three, they're all out. Almost they're all out. That's, yeah. I know, but I mean, I don't it know why it matters. It gives you something to yeah. do. Right, at the beginning. I like that. I'm always a fan of, give me some direction right off the bat. Yes. Okay. And that animal both gives you a power, but it also kind of dictates your first couple of rounds. Yes. Like, if it, if it does have to go around two trees, at least your first two turns, you're like, oh, I should put out some trees. It's it's sort of hands off, hand holding. Right. Until you're like, okay, and now you're off. Go mm -hmm. go find things to score. I appreciate the way they do it, and mm -hmm. I agree with you. I'm not so sure about the balancing of those. Yeah. They don't all feel equally good. I guess is more you know more yeah. what it is. But I think part of that is you get two and one to choose, sure. yeah. and so you kind of are also setting what direction you want it in the beginning and maybe choose the one that you feel is a little bit more overpowered. I also really like the way they handled it where it's just a little boon that you get. Mm -hmm. And so it dictates those first couple of turns as you're kind of trying to get your strategy down and learning the different animals and see. But then once you get it, it's just that little boon. It's not like yeah. it completely changes the way you're playing right. the game. Th these aren't yep. Marco Polo player powers where everything yeah. feels game breaking. Right, you know? and I like sure. that. I yeah. like it and I think that if it was complete asymmetry or something like that, it would feel one more thing to handle. Yeah. And you know what? I, I wouldn't like that. So I, I really like the player powers. That's mm -hmm. Player power is not asymmetry. And I think that's good. One well, other thing I should mention now, we're about to go into final scores, but that I didn't really love is I like all the little bonuses for covering up things and for advancing up the tracks. I don't love the one where you discard two cards all out of the six I see. face up ones. Um, yeah. And again, I get that or the tiles it's probably too. there or the or the or the tiles, yeah. I get that it's there to keep that area from stagnating. Right. But it just feels like you could reach across a table and hit someone across the face without meaning to even. That's true. Just Is that not randomly. the same thing like if you bought it yourself though? Because that would be the same thing if you bought it yourself and they were going for that one. It's like, ah! You know, so how yeah. is it different? I, than I, I just guess. Suppose, I but suppose. that's different because then I justify it. Right. My problem with this is you're just doing it randomly. Yes, you can be like, I'm going to time that to when I'm also buying one. Yeah. But oft times that doesn't happen. You could make it like a river mm -hmm. system where after every round, you take the rightmost of the cards and the rightmost tile, I don't know and you cycle it. I feel like that feels I, I feel like that'd be too punishing because it's yeah. like, oh, I don't have the water. Because sometimes turn it takes a couple it. of turns to build up for that. Right, and yeah. so if you're really building into it, so yeah. so yeah, I don't know. I don't mind. I'm glad there is that though, where you can pay the coins to refresh that. Yeah. Isn't that one of the ones you can use the coins for yeah, to refresh that? To, to no, it isn't. Oh, it's, it's not. not. That's, that's, oh, that's where I think it should it be should in be. there. Yeah, because that's there was multiple times in, in one of the plays specifically where my player power um, helped me get a boon towards that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm nowhere near all these out here. There's yeah. seven and eight water. I don't like these. These aren't, I'm not to that point of needing the powers that are yeah, out there. Yeah. So I needed it to refresh and I couldn't figure out a way to get it to refresh. So I do wish that it was something you could buy, one of those bonus yeah, powers on sense. the waterfall. That makes sense. Yeah. So what would you give it, Z? Uh, I really like it. I think it's a solid game. I'm coming down at an eight. Um, it's uh, strong. It's well put together. It is Cascadia plus, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a little two plus sometimes. <laughs> there are definitely parts of it that as I'm playing, I go, oh, right, I can, I can do this over mm -hmm. here. I forgot about this. That's fine. That'll come with, you know, many plays, and then there's plenty there to discover. A little long, like we said. Um, a little, you know, uh, inadvertently mean, or, you know, uh, that that could happen in it. But it's robust. It's really fun. Flipping the animal. Yeah, every animal can, has the two different ways to score. Um, turns feel good in this game. You actually have four you different know, you have ways the whole, to score. Like, I really like the... Yeah. I really like the... Drawing at the end of your turn, mm -hmm. and you can keep, you know, tiles sometimes, and so you're like, ooh, you're looking and organizing your stuff, and when your turn comes around, you go, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, boom, boom, boom. At the end of your turn, you draw again. It feels, it's got a nice rhythm. It mm -hmm. feels good to play this game. Yeah. So, yeah, nice strong aid for me. Where are you? I'm going to come into a nine for this game. Wow. Um, I really, really like this. It just checks so many boxes of some of my favorite games. Right. You know, um, it... 
not in the way it plays at all, but being in the nature, it kind of gives me that earth vibe, you know, where mm. you do one thing and it cascades into another and you switch out, yep. it kind of gives me that endorphin on my turn. Um, it's got the, the ecos of where you have this shared animals that you're going out and you're, you're, you're building up your thing. And the other one we talked about is the Cascadia Plus. I think uh, it can run a little bit long. I agree with that. And I think that there are maybe too many animals that you're going for. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we talked about if you take out some of the animals of each one, but I think there's eight total, right? The, the yes. number of different animals. Right, there are eight I wish I was animals. closer to six. Oh, I want 10. You know. Really? Oh, <laughs> yeah, funny. I like having the different animals. I, I think there's a little bit too many trying to look for those synergies. I think that, that would simplify it just a little bit for me. Um, but other than that, I love what it's doing. I love planning ahead on my turn. I love getting excited. I love that that excitement of pulling out. Like, ah, I didn't get what I wanted. Okay, let me pivot on this turn. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great balance mm -hmm. of both very being very very tactical. What did I get, and how can I maximize that efficiency? as well as strategy. Mm -hmm. It's such a I great agree. mix of those two that I'm just constantly engaged the entire time on my turn, on your turn, on your turn, either planning my turn or watching what you're doing, you mm -hmm. know, trying not to give it away that I'm looking at that card, like, don't <laughs> you buy that card? I think it's the right amount of player interaction. Um, I, yeah, just, I, I could gush and gush. I really, really enjoy this one. So I'm a nine. I'm really close. I think it's a absolutely gorgeous production it's great looks fantastic mm -hmm. the art the tiles now we have the upgraded with the wooden tiles yeah. but i just think it all is fantastic i'm giving it an 8.5 and i'm digging in half a point because of that time that game sure. length um but i love the plethora of options i have yeah you want to concentrate on the water cards go for it the last game we played i was like i'm going to track Run those tracks all the way to the top, see if that works. And you it's did. A, you it's managed a, to do it. That's it's right. a reasonable you strategy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do it. So I like that. I thought it was a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of deck building. I know that you said you're wearing on deck building, mm -hmm. which... It's confusing to me because this is basically a deck builder with tokens. Well, it's the I same said the thing. difference it, is the number of resources that you're dealing yeah, with. There's, been, games that, there's good. been deck builders with like four resources Not good before. ones. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll, we'll I'm like, kidding. I don't know. Bring it side. I can't think of one. Anyhow, I really like it. What okay. about you? I'm at a nine as well. Yeah, I I, uh, I really think uh, it, it does so many things well. Oftentimes when you're playing bag building games or deck building games, you feel like you've got wasted turns. I don't feel like I have wasted turns. Now, there are things that I'm hoping for, right? That's a good point. I, you're right. I never had a turn yeah. Yeah. where I felt like, well, I can't really do anything. Right. You can always do something. It may not be what you went into that turn hoping for. But that's part of where the clever play comes in. That's where the mitigation comes in. That's yeah. where the you know yeah, the, yeah, the cards. Well, is being like, able to keep one or two or, or three, three tiles. Right? Yes, that is like the sort of unsung hero of this game. I agree. I really right, think yeah. so. Like being able to go. Oh, I pulled my four fruit, but on the wrong turn, I have no other fruit. You can keep that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That is a, you can keep that next turn. You yeah, can keep that really turn big after. deal. Until yeah, you get that so big good. turn. Yeah, if right. you've maxed out your storage and you have three uh, different fruit tokens, but you're maybe two off from the one you really want, just keep them and you have a pretty good chance. Yeah, well, you're guaranteed that at, that point, at that point because right. you can always spend two tiles for, for one, one of anything you yeah, want. Yeah, so yeah. that feels good. Yeah, it's just a very, very good game. Excellent. Nine out of ten. Well, there you go, folks. That's Life of the Amazonia. I'm Tom. I'm Mike. I'm Camilla. I'm Z. I'm a Tukin.